here we go. Uh, my amp collection and or the best amps I think you can have for under a grand, but tone is so subjective that many of you will disagree or wonder why I don't have a particular amp in my collection. And I think I've pretty much played uh, everything I can think of that's not super boutique uh, amps under a thousand dollars. And these are the ones I've kept and I don't plan to buy any more. Honestly, you're laughing right now. I know that. You're saying, yeah, right. But I am really, I think I've come to the end of my journey here with my gas. I do have one more guitar in order that I ordered a while ago uh, because it ticks all the boxes and why not? And it's an affordable guitar. It's, I've been waiting for this company to uh, respond to the public and just do something right for once and we'll see but I just called and it's gonna be it's still like October 21 before I get it all right so on with it in no particular order let's go ahead and just say I think the uh, the best whoa oh hey what's going on there there we go um, I think the best uh, practice amp hands down for your office desk or whatever it has to be the Yamaha THR 10 I really like it the snap or uh, positive grid spark is also a really killer amp but the positive grid comes to life once you start using the the models and the apps I had a really hard time using it just like an amp and dialing in a tone with the knobs uh, once the modes were kicked in and the models were kicked in, I thought it was great. Very cool amp, but I don't want to deal with the models in an iPad or my phone all the time. This Yamaha, I think, you can dial up killer tones. It's cute, it's pretty, it's classy, it's awesome. All right, uh, next, the Tweaker 15. This is my fourth one, and I'm keeping it. I've done the uh, an effects loop mod on it so that it can take low power pedals without reducing the signal. It will take 6V6 or 6L6 tubes. I plan to try a large pair of 6L6 in it pretty soon. But there's just a purity about the Tweaker series that isn't even in the Rebel series. The Rebels have a, a, a mid-frequency mm, ice pick that I don't care for. But the Tweaker is just, there's a, a certain amount of honesty with it. It's pure. It is tweakable. All those little switches down there do actually do things. It's kind of subtle, but they do help shape your tone in good ways. And it's a, I think it's one of the best pedal platforms out there. Uh, some amps retain their tone when you stomp on a pedal, uh, but the tweaker really allows the pedal's tone to shine through, uh, which which is nice. Uh, the and the crunch channel on the tweaker is ungodly. I think it's just low gain. It's tight. It's pure and honest. Really like it. Next, the Jet City. This thing's a beast. Um, might poke in a little uh, video here. I don't know. It's uh, highly moddable. Uh, Tone City, I think it is. As uh, all you have to do is look up Jet City amp mods or JCA amp mods, and you'll get. I think it's Tone City. Probably 40 mods available for this beast, and I like this one because it is. It, you know, it is kind of loud, but oh my gosh, the tone is great. I like that it doesn't pretend to have a clean channel. It's crunch and overdriven. And it's very much like the LBX in character, which is awesome, right? Yeah, totally awesome. And you don't, you can't get them anymore. 
so it may end up being worth quite a bit. I don't think Jet City is producing amps anymore. Uh, I had to wait a long time to find this one, and I'm thinking about doing the either the deep mod or the tight mod, Sodano mod, but uh, they're not getting back to me right now. Haven't been for a while. All right, but killer amp uh, and affordable, 300 or so on reverb, and really great EQ, really great tone, really strong, growly type amp. All right, the Marshall DSL-20. I have a love affair with uh, the Marshall DSL line. I had an original 40, and the crunch channel was amazing, but the lead channel was a bit brittle, I thought. And so when the new DSLs came out, I bit, had the 40 for a while, and then sold that because it was just too big. Marshalls do like to have their masters up really high, and I couldn't do that at home with the, the 40. Lugging it around to play with was inconvenient. It's very heavy amp, so I got rid of that. Because anymore, if I do play out, it's like a talent show at school or something. We have a little band at school called the New Scorpions, and it's a ton of fun. But uh, you know, this little 20 watt is more than ample for that. Plus, this will stack on a matching Marshall extension cabinet which is cool so i may sometime get an extension cab uh, but really don't think i will uh, a few tube mods in this or you know went with the uh, 12a y in v1 and put a cream back in it and unlike the 40 which i always had to run in half power this one i can run in full power and has, still have the, the uh, master up pretty high. And the Marshall tone's great. The Marshall clean isn't pristine clean, like everybody says, but the clean it has is Marshall and works great. I think it's great. I don't mind a little grit with my green, my clean. Oh, also to mention, this is a solid state, the Yamaha. And one benefit of that is on my 40, I was popping in here every morning, you know, for 10 minutes at a time a couple of years ago and turning the amp on and then turning the amp off after 10 minutes of play and I'd go off to work and I was I went through tubes pretty quick I went through a set of uh, well two of the preamp tubes in about six months lost all my bass and it turned out to be uh, the first two preamp tubes tubes that I had to replace and so having a solid state amp around makes a lot of sense if you are the kind of person that will grab five or ten minutes of guitar in the morning before going off to work which I do and so that's just perfect it's in the back room it's on the table it's out of the way it's it's nice looking so nobody minds it being there it's small and I can just grab a couple of minutes if I feel like it and get off to school perfect now also I have a DSL 5 which I think is probably the best 5 watt amp out there somebody will say Blackstar is and that's fine um, but it's a matter of opinion, and I think the Marshall takes pedals a lot better than the, the HT5. Although the MK2 HT5s are pretty darn cool. I just prefer the Marshall tone. And I also put a 12-inch in the DSL-5. But I keep that at work. It's not here. I keep that at work under my desk with a tiny mini pedal board. Made a pedal board last year out of uh, some, uh, some sort of gizmo from a thrift store and it's got a couple of mini pedals on that a delay drive and a looper and that's that works really well all right so i've got the pv up here and it's another monster type amp Ooh, I'm running out of cord um high gain amp <laughs> you're gonna get dizzy i didn't lock down the tripod the top of the tripod so it's having a tendency to wiggle all over the place um, you might ask why do you have the angle fireball and the PV invective and the answer would be because the PV is a little different it's it's uh, EL84 instead of the 6L6 and it's just a little different beast I had to make sure my screensaver didn't go to sleep 
Um, great foot switch, you know, four button foot switch. And it uh, is just a little different tone than the angle. It's a little more on the meaner side, a little more on the brittle side. And it matches the 2x12 cab I have. So why not have the PV? Um, I did like the MH, except for the fizziness, the 6505. This took care of the fizziness, and it's got some cool features that I really appreciate. The Wangs is handmade in China. Wangs, I should say. It's Wangs. Uh, also, it's got the 6L6, I believe, tubes in it. No, they're smaller. So 6V6 tubes, and it's got a pristine clean. It's got a great crunch, and the lead tone is to die for, especially when, if you want to go to the heavier stuff, that Wongs with EMGs is shredworthy, very tight, very nasty. It's nasty. And so, uh, and it's cool. Uh, handmade in China by the Wong's family deal. They've got uh, quite a few knockoffs. They're kind of copies of, of famous amps. And it sounds great, so why wouldn't I keep it? Well, Laney, of the, all the Laney amps, I've had the Studio, the IRT30, and this one. I've never had a Cub. But uh, as far as the Laney amps go, you, the tones you get are the tones you get. I don't think uh, overdrive pedals work as well with Laney amps to shape the tone. It just tends to compress whatever tone you got in your Laney. Not that the Laney tone is bad, but overdrive pedals don't do as much to affect the tone as with other amps. But my daughter's name is Delaney, so I thought it'd be fun to have Laney. But of those, this is the one I appreciate the most. It's just the dirt channel. It's just the high gain channel. You still have the dynamics, you have the variable tone, you've got the pre-boost, which is one of the best I've ever played. It's a mixture of gain and volume as you crank it up. And with this single channel amp and the pre-boost option, you have a real nice uh, flavor of high gain type tones. And it looks cool, you know, that chassis is different than anything else you'll see out there. The orange, I think everybody ought to have an orange. Uh, this one is the Jim Root Signature. Well, not made anymore, so it's going to maintain its value, its worth. The Brent Hines, I actually favored a little bit over this tone-wise, but the Brent Hines had that worthless clean channel, and that bothered me a little bit. Um, and I really like this one. And with EMGs, like... Uh, uh, Jim Root plays, it does sound killer. Uh, but what I really like about the Orange Amps is how they are a low gain. It's not a, I, it doesn't sound good to me with a lot of gain. It gets mushy and fizzy and unusable. But the tightness the Orange Amps have as at, at low gain settings is sweet. It's kind of like a soul food pedal. But it's in an amp, and it sounds better than just the soul food because you got the EQ options and whatnot. But the tones I get with this low gain is just great, and it's it's tight. It's low gain, and it's not loose or fizzy, or the decay doesn't sound like tearing paper. It's just really tight, even though the gain is low. And because the gain is so low, you can do a lot with pedals because there's still a lot of gain left in the gain stage internally before your tubes start to compress and things get kind of mushy, which is cool. All right, so that's that. And then the Fender Sonic, Supersonic 22, an awesome, awesome amp. Every time I plug into this, I think, damn, that sounds great. Great Fender clean channel, absolutely nails ACDC, and then you can get it cranked up, you know, higher gain than that if you want, but it's not a high gain type amp for sure so it doesn't do what that does or what that does it does what it does but it sounds so full and just rich uh, great reverb two channels with a burn the gain two gains right there you can set the, the compression rate for your tubes as well as an actual gain which is kind of fun Treble and bass on the clean channel with the foot switch. It's got a big old four button foot switch too. So you can have the normal or fat come on. And then you've got clean or vintage and burn. 
and you can also turn the reverb on and off as well but that thing is killer and definitely a keeper when you're in the the mood for something like that it's super fun so that is it for my amps i do have wow boy did i almost make a mistake i forgot to mention the angle uh, fireball 25 i love this amp uh, i've had the mesa mark 25 which is a great amp no denying that but it's hard for me it was hard to dial in and it was i thought kind of limited on tones even with all the the eq and the buttons and whatnot the tones you got out of it were killer but i thought it struggled to deliver a lot of good tones it had a few good tones but i thought it was dry and brittle as well not very forgiving and then i also had the uh, angle or the yeah the iron ball and i found it similar uh i thought it was a little bit sterile the clean channel didn't take pedals well i thought and the dirty channel was pretty brittle and tanky tank 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 on the chugs and it wouldn't uh deliver a real good 80s rock type moan 80s metal type tone but this fireball is killer and it sounds really good at low volumes the attenuation is excellent the adjustable noise gate is excellent the clean channel is great and as you bring up the gain it just stays great uh, which is super cool and it takes pedals really well and so it's it's great uh, <laughs> it's great the uh, I hope to be able to get the uh, the pro cab just because the two together uh, look just r ridiculous. I have a Eminence DV77 Mick Thompson speaker on the way, and I think that in the cab will be phenomenal. It's kind of like the Swamp Thing with a little better top end, from what I know about it. Okay, so now we're done. I do have a Mesa. Rectoverb out in the garage and just put the uh, G12 speaker back in it after having the G12 in it and then the Vintage 30, UK made Vintage 30 in it. And I went ahead and put the G12 back in it. I'm going to bring it back in and see if I can develop a relationship with it. But we'll see. Um, so it's not included here because it's probably on the chopping block can't keep them all and it's so far it's not an amp i gravitate towards like some of these others these others are just you know wow love 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 it whenever i plug into them it's easy it's not forced it's not aggravating the tones right there immediately and that's what we're all looking for in an amplifier so that's my list and I don't think you could much talk about anything I haven't played in the past. These are the ones I've gravitated towards and like. And I think my journey's pretty much done, and it's been worth it. Uh, I'm the sort of person that when I'm into something, I kind of get into it because I want to know about it. When I got into golf, I got into golf, and I did a couple of years of golf, and that was rewarding. I got into cigars for a while, and I did a couple of years of cigars, and I looked into, <laughs> you know, cigars, and just when I got into motorcycles, I got into motorcycles, and then when I got into music and amps again for the second time, I was big into them in the 80s, but didn't have any idea what I was doing. I was just a long-haired rock guy and living that sort of uh, life. Um, but had, getting back into it these days, I I wanted to see you know what the difference is a six L six and I've got that six V six and I've got that EL thirty four tubes I I can tell you what that's like the EL eighty four tubes I know what that's like solid state versus tube high gain mid gain crunch all those little things that make up tone that give you a vocabulary and a knowledge to talk about tone and share that with other people is a big reason I got into it. Plus, 
this will be what I do now for uh, a couple ten years or so until I start losing my chops at which point I'll probably get rid of it all and buy RC airplanes finish out my uh, <laughs> hobby my years doing this watching the plane go around the skies because at some point like it was with golf I got good at it and then issues with my back and whatnot prevented me from playing at the level I, I wanted to and so then you know why do it um well why do it yeah for the fun of it but it was no longer fun for me yeah all right so uh, thanks for watching uh, if you have any questions about amps let me know um these are the guitars i have that i'm sticking with i may sell that hollow body telecaster but every time i pick it up it's great and i wonder well why sell it because i'm out of hooks that's why my old esp is great irreplaceable charvel wolfgang with all its finished flaws but i'm going to keep that love it and the slime green jackson also kind of iconic up there we've got the vintage tele stratocaster which i hardly ever play so i should sell it but when you want a strat you got a strat but do i really want a strat i don't know and then love the uh, les paul vintage les paul with the gold hardware that's awesome the schecter telecaster also is a really nice guitar and then it yeah all right so anyway you all take care have the best day ever hopefully the smoke all blows out pretty soon we can get back to uh, some sort of normalcy old guy jamming is out take care of each other <laughs>